Welcome to Stacks. So in the Stacks and Queues section that we're doing now, there's going to be a lot of borrowing from the linked list section. We'll be able to reuse a lot of code. So this section is relatively easy if you've already gone through the linked list section. So what is a stack? My favorite analogy for a stack is a can of tennis balls. Okay, so let's remove the balls, add them one at a time. When we add something to a stack, we say that we are pushing an item onto the stack. That's the terminology. And if we remove it, that is called popping an item from a stack. So let's say this is tennis ball number one, and then we push another tennis ball onto the stack. At this point, you can't get tennis ball one out without removing tennis ball two. You can only remove the top item. Let's say we push another item onto the stack. Now the only tennis ball that can be removed is this one. This is called LIFO, last in, first out. So let's remove that top one, and we would say that we're going to pop that from the stack. Now we can remove the second one, and because we have removed that one, now we can remove the last one. So now let me give you an example that we would use in computing. Let's say you're surfing the web and you go to Facebook. And then you go to YouTube, and then you go to Instagram, and then you check your email. What we've created over there on the right is a stack. And when you hit the back button, you're popping that top item from the stack to go back to Instagram, to YouTube, and to Facebook. There are all kinds of examples of where we use stacks in computing. And one of the ones that we're going to look at in some detail later in this course is going to be a call stack. So a very common way of implementing a stack is to use an array. And remember with a stack, we just are going to add and remove from the same end. Doesn't matter which end that is as long as it's the same end. So we're not gonna use an array in this course because it's already included in JavaScript, and that would just be too easy. So we want to do something where we're going to write some code. But I do want to talk about this a little bit, because if this comes up in an interview, and they ask you, how would you implement a stack with an array, it does matter which end you use. So when you add something to the end of the array, or you remove it, remember this is O of 1. Whereas if you do it on the other end, remember you have to re-index everything to take that off, and then re-index everything again to bring that item back. That's O of N. So if you're going to do a stack with an array, always do it on the end, not the beginning. And then you can just think about the stack like this. Also, an easy way to remember this is with a stack, you pop something from the stack, or you push something onto the stack, and that's exactly what those two things are called with an array. And like I said, we're not going to use an array. We're going to use a linked list. Now, we're going to alter this a little bit to turn this into a stack. But unlike an array, when you create a stack with a linked list, you're always going to use the left side of the linked list as the top. In other words, the null terminated end is going to be at the bottom. You never want to do it like this, where the null terminated end is at the top. Now let's turn this back into a regular linked list and look at why. When you remove an item from a linked list on the end, it's O of N. To add it back in, this is O of 1. So we have 1 O of N, 1 O of 1. Whereas on the other end, it's O of 1 to remove and O of 1 to add. And like I mentioned before, it doesn't matter which end you use as long as it's the same end. So for a linked list, this is the better end for adding and removing because they're both O of 1. So that's why our stack, if we use a linked list, is always going to look like this. When we created our linked list, we had a method that we created 
to remove the first item called unshift or to add something in as the first item called shift. So we can use those for creating methods for pop and push with some alteration. Also with the linked list, we had a head and tail. We'll rename these for the stack as top and bottom. And we actually don't even need bottom, so I'm gonna remove that. So our stack is going to look like this. All right, that is our overview for stacks.